back in 2016. And this truck actually comes to market, will be on the roads this year, which is pretty incredible. So a lot of people don't know about us. Um, but we're years ahead of our competition. We have over $14 billion in orders. We're sold out for four years in production. And our unveiling for the production truck happens next month, essentially in about 40 days from now in April. It happens at an event called Nikola World. Uh, Nikola World is an event in Phoenix, Arizona, where we'll be unveiling the Nikola truck to the entire world. And this event is, uh, this event is incredible. It's not just uh, the Nikola uh, hydrogen electric truck, um, but we also are unveiling our European hydrogen electric truck and also our USA uh, pure electric, battery electric vehicles as well. Um, we, have, we have four different product lineups that will be unveiled at this event. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool because Nikola, I would think, is really the only company in the world that will give you a real straight um, opinion on what is best for your fleet. We don't just build hydrogen, we build hydrogen and electric, so we don't really care. Um, our, hydrogen, our hydrogen truck can actually outperform a diesel in every category. It's the lightest hydrogen production truck ever built. It's the most powerful. Um, it's, uh, it also competes with, if you look at a diesel, the main problem we've had so far is the, is the weight and the performance, the cold weather, other issues. Those are all now recently been, um, um, been achieved. So I'm going to just jump through. I only have like four or five slides because I really want to just talk through the things that are actually most important to you guys. Um, but what do we do? We, we essentially build... Um, our company designs uh, hydrogen electric semi-trucks, electric semi-trucks, and what makes us very unique is we actually own the entire infrastructure of fueling. We have over 700 stations going up around the country. Each one of these stations produces up to 24,000 tons of hydrogen. So just to give you an idea, one of those stations will be bigger than any station in the world, and we're building 700 of them. These are going up all over the country. We signed an $800 million order with Anheuser-Busch. Those are going in 10 different locations around the country, and we have 790 more stations going up simultaneously by 2028. So on average, we have about, right around about, close to about 100 stations a year going up. That'll give America the entire coverage for hydrogen. It's kind of like the chicken and the egg. The biggest problem we've had with zero emission so far is the infrastructure. Fleets are willing to buy trucks, but we realized if we weren't like Verizon, where we didn't provide the phone and, the, and, the, and essentially the tower, no one would ever buy the phone. And it's, it's insane. These OEM, uh, a lot of the OEMs uh, don't, have never thought about that. Shell or, and other groups that dominate the, dominate the fueling, Chevron, all these other groups, they dominate the, uh, the fueling, and then truck manufacturers just build trucks, and you've got to go find out where you're going to fill them and where you're going to buy stuff from. So what Nikola did is we came in from the beginning, and we said we're going to solve all that problem. We're going to give you the entire, um, uh, call it the ecosystem, vertical integrated system, all included with our truck. So that includes your truck, that includes your fuel, includes your service, your warranty, your maintenance, everything, white glove service. You pay nothing other than, than, than to just drive the truck with your driver. And what we've done now is we've consolidated all the problems into one. Very very similar to like what Apple has done with the phone. We always call the Nikola truck the Apple of uh, trucking. Why is that? It's because Jobs has done a really good uh, job at bringing um, everything into a smartphone. When he came out with a camera and a smartphone, everyone laughed at him because they said, oh man, no one will ever put it, no one will ever use a camera for, you know, for a um, I'm sorry, the phone for a camera is going to require a, a, a massive, massive camera to do that. Or people had their Franklin Covey planners. No one will ever get rid of their planner. And you look at all these things and essentially the, the, the consolidation of the ecosystem is what allowed them to be successful. We knew going into this we'd never be successful if we didn't own the entire ecosystem because we didn't have 100 years of experience or 50 years where we have station, uh, you know, service networks everywhere, customers all over the world. We had to completely transform the, the market. Um, but why did we do that? It wasn't just for us to win or succeed. It was really to make the life of the fleets a lot more simple. So when you come in and you order anything above 25 trucks, we actually put the station in for you. That 10 to $20 million CapEx all on Nikola. You don't worry about it. You just pay per mile. It's literally the, it's the way to get over all the problems that happen with zero emission. So what we, we, build, we build the truck, we provide the hydrogen, and maybe what a lot of you don't know about us is we also have a power sport division. Uh, this is kind of cool because it allows us to integrate our technology on these small vehicles, test them, and then put it back into the big truck. Um, I originally, I, I love to go out in the outdoors, and so I, I used to drive a Polaris, my, my mill. My belt uh, broke a couple times. I got really frustrated, so I ended up calling my engineers and said, let's build an electric one. And had no idea it would take off like it is. Uh, we'll end up with billions of dollars in sales on those already. National parks are looking to ban emissions altogether in the parks. And it's about dang time. You go up hiking, all you hear is the wah, 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 you know, everywhere. 
And so it's nice because with the with the NEQA Power Sport Division, whether it's on water with our watercraft program coming out, or it's on land with our UTV off road program, now you can drive those up in the in nature, and you're not you know you're not driving all the deer and the elk and everything else away from you. You can actually go up and enjoy nature, and they can enjoy you being part of it too. So uh, uh, NEQA is a very unique company, very different than than uh, most people. A lot of people have asked, how in the world have you done what you've done? And it's because we've assembled the, the most world-class partnerships you can never dream of. Whether it's Bosch, Wabco, Ryder, Meritor, Nell, Fitzgerald, Worthington, or, or Pratt Miller, all these different groups have major parts in helping us achieve what we've done today um, so far. So we have not tried to do this on our own. We've gone to people like Wabco and we said, look, we need the most advanced independent suspension that's ever been built for a semi-truck. And Wabco said, no one's ever built an independent suspension for an on-road semi-truck. And I said, what do you have? What have you ever done? And they said, well, we have some military independent suspension. I said, I love it. Let's do it. Took us uh, about four years and uh, from the time we started till it'll go into uh, be finalized into production. And that suspension system is unique because it allows two motors to output with our patents output shafts to each wheel. So what that means, you go down the road, now your wheels are taking the beating, not transferring all the load into the frame. So we've eliminated, uh, for the most part, most all the load going into the frame. Mm -hmm. So it also gives you full, uh, full traction control as well, which is really nice. With a normal axle, you're going to get limited slip. With Nikola's axle, you get full all-wheel drive all the time, no matter what. Um, there's a lot of other things that go into that. I could talk to you for hours about the independent suspension and why it's so awesome. Um, it, the reason why no one's done it is because of the cost. It costs us $7,000 a truck more to do independent suspension than a regular truck. But ultimately, I've taken all the money away from Shell and Chevron, and so I can afford to pay that $7,000 on that on that feature to give it to you guys. So what is the, this is the Nikola 2, this will be, uh, this is it. this was a uh, rendering, it actually looks, uh, it, it's very it's very similar, um, but it is, it's it's gorgeous. I just got back from, um, from back east in a location where we were doing um, um, all the dyno testing, assembly, and and I, I couldn't believe it. We showed a, a couple people the final truck before the unveiling, and it was, uh, it was a moment that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. It is absolutely beautiful. It's a 210 wheelbase. <laughs> it has 80 kilograms of hydrogen on board. It has over um, 200 kilowatt hours of battery on board. Why is that? Because we didn't build this truck to be an inner city truck. We built it to be a true long haul, uh, what we call diesel is dead truck. Um, what that means is that we built a truck that can outperform a diesel in every category, range, weight, L uh, climb at 6% grade at, at essentially 65 miles an hour under an 80,000 pound load. If you, go to par if you go up to the El Cajon Pass, diesels will be doing 10 to 15 miles an hour, we'll do 65. Uh, drivers right now are so regulated, they're not allowed to, they're, they're regulated on how many hours they drive, which is kind of crazy. I, I don't agree with it. I, I, I think it ought to be based mainly on miles and some other things, but that's okay. Ultimately, the biggest problem for drivers are is they're limited. They can't, they can't drive um, they're always, they have an incentive to be dangerous because if they're not getting as many miles as they can, they don't get paid. So what we've done is we built a truck that allows them to go up the hill, maintain that same speed, they level off, they maintain the same speed. And that's the idea is to try to eliminate the, eliminate the downtime for the drivers and to give a, a, um, the truck the ability to actually uh, um, outcompete a diesel. So you can see, I don't think this, oh, it does have a laser, okay. A 500 to 1,000 mile range. So we built a truck that truly competes with the diesel. A 20 minute refill time. Nikola has actually chaired and championed the, the heavy duty, it was just the press release just went out today actually. Uh, Nikola has chaired and championed the heavy duty fueling infrastructure, uh, I'm sorry, fueling uh, protocols for around the world. So this was a partnership that Nikola uh, has created. Uh, we, we championed it, we built it, and then we brought six or eight other partners on board. It was really cool. You guys can look that up today. Essentially, it's um, a whole bunch of other OEMs that have come on board and said, we want to create a specific standard for, for heavy-duty refueling on hydrogen. And we need to be able to fill trucks very fast, and that does not exist right now. Um, we've done it on our truck, so we're like, well, why create a protocol kind of like Tesla did with charging where it's not compatible with others? We wanted to create one that was compatible with everybody. Um, and so we wanted to get ahead of that before it became a problem. And so um, I don't think that Tesla saw that when they first started, so I, I don't think it was a, a, a bad intent. It just really wasn't planned. And so we wanted to prevent that from happening again. So that's essentially what the Nikola truck is. You guys already know, zero tailpipe emissions, which is the most important. Because we produce all of our own hydrogen, we actually make all of our own hydrogen out of our solar wind or hydro. So our truck is really the only truck from, well, you know, well the, well the wheel 
that is truly zero emission from the beginning to the end. We don't just build the trucks with zero emission as our factory. We have the only off-grid headquarters that we know of, um, completely off of hydrogen, battery, and solar. We have 3.5 megawatts of solar up on the roof, producing about 18 megawatts of energy a day in our headquarters. And we're storing uh, 10,000 kilograms of hydrogen and using fuel cells as energy backup and batteries as, uh, as our as, uh, energy sources as well. Our company is truly one of the most innovative companies in the world. We're doing that to our hydrogen stations also. So what that means now is we use, we use wind, solar, hydro to produce all of our hydrogen. So therefore, when you buy our truck, you know not just the truck is zero emission, but the actual source of the fuel is as well. And you're getting it for a fixed cost per mile. Usually, right, it depends on the area of the country, but use around a dollar a mile for, a, for an, an average. And what does that mean? That means now you can, you just have a single class and you don't worry about anything. You just drive. You pay us a buck a mile, include your truck, your warranty, your service, and your fuel, your zero emission hydrogen fuel that came from zero emission methods, not from a coal plant down the road. And that's the, that's the advantage that we, uh, uh, that we have with Nikola. This is the Nikola tray. This, is, this will be shown off on April 16th as well in, in, uh, um, in Phoenix, Arizona. This will be launched in Europe about the exact same time. People said this could never be done. The difference between our truck and everything else is that we built this truck from the ground up specifically around hydrogen. Everything about it was hydrogen uh, when we designed it. The frame, the chassis, the body in white, everything about it, the axles. It allowed us to store about 30 to 40 more kilograms of hydrogen than anyone else in the world. And that is an important thing in order to make sure you guys don't have, you know, you have no downtime. Um, the Nikola tray, which is the European version, is the same thing. This has about 60 kilograms of hydrogen, and currently in, in Europe, the, they're only seeing about 30 kilograms. So we're able to almost double the hydrogen capacity on board because we designed the truck specifically for hydrogen. So you guys already understand the, the, the advantages, but the one thing I really like about it is, one, is you control where the, where the energy comes from, so you know it's clean. Second one is, is 15 to 20 minute refills on 80 kilograms. Now you're talking about what it is with the diesel as well. Um, so as I talked to you about the zero emission from beginning to end, everything about it is a, a, a Nikola controlled so we can control the supply chain. Um, the network, we have over 700 stations. We are not doing a charging network. Nikola doesn't do a charging network for BEV, but we are offering a BEV solution for those that want it. Um, our trucks come in 500 kilowatt hour, 750 kilowatt hour, and one megawatt hour of energy options. That's a day cab with a 210 um, uh, wheelbase. It's the actual chassis is designed for it's the same thing with our hydro, or with our hydrogen one. It's two thousand horsepower, and it's uh, it's uh, three around two to three thousand foot pounds of torque before reduction. The problem with that is it's too much. So what we've done is we've toned it down. Um, most fleets in America will need um, somewhere around five to six hundred horsepower, um, but the chassis itself is actually built for that. So what that means is that we'll tone a lot of the we build these electronics, we build the motors, we build everything for this for this high rate. And then we tone it all the way down, and what that does is it doubles or triples the lifespan of those parts. Because if they're, um, I don't know how many of you guys fly, I love to fly, I'm a pilot as well. And uh, I have a TBM 930, uh, flies about 400 miles an hour. And this plane is incredible because it's built by Pratt & Whitney. And Pratt & Whitney, Whitney, this engine's built at 1,800 horsepower, but it only has a continuous of 800. So you only top off at 850 around there. What does that mean? It means that that engine has never had a failure in its history uh, that's ever caused a casualty. Why is that? Because it's only running at you know less than forty percent of its uh, um, right around about fifty percent of its uh, um, of its total output. So that's what Nikola's truck has done as well. Is we decided we wanted to build it that could a truck a components that would not break. We knew it would cost us more uh, to do that. It cost us about another ten thousand dollars per truck to make sure our components are built for the full life cycle um, and the full power output. Most OEMs never would do that because they're all about the cost, driving every penny out. But for us, it's about making sure our trucks just don't break. And if they don't break, then you can spend more time driving. It's like an Apple computer. I buy an Apple computer. I know I'm spending $1,000 more than a PC. But the thing just works. And it works good. And I'm happy with it. Um, I have a PC. I just, prefer, I just don't like to use it. And so that's what we want people to see. We want people to look at Nikola and say, I have a Nikola. It costs a little bit more sometimes. But all the benefits of it are so much better. I just don't want to touch the other thing. And that's ultimately what we've done. So... If you look at Nikola, what we've done is uh, um, we'll, we'll be straight up and honest with you. We don't really care. You can, you can order an electric one. You can order a hydrogen one. We have no cat in the fight. As they say, you know, we'll, we'll just shoot you straight. Hydrogen cannot be when you control the hydrogen cost like we do. It's impossible to be hydrogen over the road. Class A trucks, um, 
BEV doesn't even come close. When it comes to over the road long haul, when it comes to inner city, electric is a very good option. Uh, when you're talking uh, under, I try to tell people if you're running under 300 miles, electric's a great option. You get over that 300 miles and it becomes a huge impediment. Um, and also truck uptime is a big deal. If you need a vehicle that has to have uptime 20 hours a day or if you have, you know, if you have two, two shifts running, sometimes even more, um, hydrogen's a solution. Um, a battery is, is a little bit more difficult because of the charge times. If you start to pull a megawatt of energy out of the grid, you're going to get nailed with some high prices. With hydrogen, you can produce the hydrogen over 24 hours a day at a base load. We contract that base load with our own solar farms that we put in. Nikola has its own solar division. Um, we put those solar farms in. Those go in some, somewhere either in Arizona, in California, in, uh, in Nevada, wherever it may be. And we pull the energy out of the grid. Um, you know, we direct transmit it right in. And then we also sell all the excess clean energy to those that need it. So you, uh, Nikola is a very unique company because it's not just a manufacturer. Um, these trucks are actually done. You'll see it driving at Nikola World in less than a month and a half. So it's not a, uh, it's not a, a, a pipe dream. It's actually the first truck going into production. We're, we're, they're on the road later this year with fleets. Um, we have 25 going out on the road next year and 100 the year after, and then we start uh, production in at the end of 2022. So we're only a couple years away, um, and that's pretty cool because everyone talks about it, but no one's actually doing it, and we've done it. So um, it's kind of neat to be able to see that. Um, I, I would... I would just, uh, one last thing I would say is, I, I, I grew up driving locomotives. This is, what I, this, this is where it all came from. My dad uh, managed the railroad uh, for Union Pacific on the West Coast. And in Vegas, he would send me out on locomotives. And when I was a kid, I said, you know, the, the conductor looked over and he said, one day they'll be smart enough to build a locomotive semi-truck. I was six years old, I remember the day. And that was what caused me to want to build uh, Nikola and the... Um, the, uh, the essentially the locomotive semi truck was the philosophy of it. Um, we're just lucky enough nowadays that there's many people uh, like Toyota actually that have gone out and, and uh, figured out a lot of problems that existed in fuel cells. And without them um, teaching the world about it, it would be impossible to have the technology that we have now. And so we're real lucky. We did design our own system from the ground up. It's one of the largest in the world. It's over a 240 kilowatt fuel cell. It's massive. Um, um, but it's uh, it, a lot of it does come from actually uh, um, Toyota has taught a lot of people on how to cold start and hot start a fuel cell. That took about six to eight years to figure out and a lot of money. So by sharing that, in, uh, that intellectual property around the world, teaching people and trying to promote hydrogen, it's allowed the rest of the world to actually do that. So my goal is over time as we become a solidified company is to actually start to retrain the world around the IP that we know so that future entrepreneurs can build around the IP that we know and can come up and exist just like we did. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.